Today's episode is sponsored by the VeChain Foundation. Now, we often talk about how emerging technologies like blockchain have the potential to revolutionize sustainability. And VeChain is at the forefront of this green movement with initiatives like VBetterDAO. Let's take a closer look. Imagine tracking small actions like recycling at low cost, making them valuable assets. These verified records build a massive collective impact, benefiting people through their own actions. Sound a bit complex, but VeChain made it fun. Explore our apps at vbetter.com. VeChain's goal is to power a new era of sustainable solutions. So if you've got an app idea or just want to earn rewards for small, sustainable actions every day, go check out vbetterdow.com to find out more. And now back to the show. The sustainability problem is such a cross-border and decentralized issue. Like this, the people that are being hit the hardest are the people with the fewest funds to actually like do anything about it, right? It's places in less economically developed countries around the world who don't really necessarily have the available funds to address those issues. And we, yeah. it may be the richer Western society who are causing a lot of the problems do have the funds. And because we don't see the impact necessarily directly at us, we're actually not doing much about it. So I completely agree with like the reasoning why you've gone for this approach. Um, and I love the definition that V Better Dare is effectively a treasury to support and back these X to earn apps. And we haven't actually touched on the idea of X to earn apps, but it's such an interesting concept like jack and i have you know previously talked about micro incentives and how you know one of the main purposes or in my mind anyway of crypto was because it's this efficient payment system you can actually have these micro incentives which could lead to you know micro rewards for small actions mm -hmm. so you, you you kind of you talked about a lot of different applications could you double click and just really explain one of your favorite applications for example and how this x to earn app works in that use case well, um, you know, I, I try as as um, as the leader of the Vegan Foundation and also the V Better Now, um, I try to not be like kind of biased for okay. any kind of application. <laughs> I love them all. Honestly, I love them yeah. all. Seriously, um, because let's say by design, I think not only our own engineers but also those developers, the builders from a the community, they're really genius. You know, uh, when we picture this idea roughly and they're able to deliver with those different type of application, but following like our um, time of lives, uh, daily lives, from the beginning, you can wake up and drink a coffee. You can choose use a recycled mug or use a paper cup or disposal cup. Or when you drive to your work, you can take an EV or not a fossil car. Or, mm -hmm. you know, um, when you walk, um, in the in your lunch break, you can find out, um, you know, what kind of uh, you can pick up the littering from the street and clean up a bit just at your convenience. Um, even like when you finish your work, you go to a supermarket, buy your groceries. You can choose different type of products, right? Is this a sustainable one or not sustainable one? Or um, you can choose, um, you know, recycle bag or try to not so you not using. Uh, plastic ones generating mm. the plastic waste or plastic pollutions. Uh, even before you go to sleep, you can you know listen a little bit like audio books um, mm. to save some trees as well. So uh, honestly, all of the different type of X to N, I just I just love them all. And, you love them all. <laughs> yeah, and, and I think the 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 most important thing for all of the application, it's like very convenient, very friendly mm. to use for um, any users. So basically, you don't need to, I, I would say thanks to um, all of the, we call emerging technology progress, including the AI, including the IoT, it kind of make the feasibility so much um, there. Like you can just simply to, to use application, take a few steps, boom, you finish your work and you record your work. And sure, there will be more um, functionalities or features kind of expecting from the users right now, but starting from simple, starting from easy way, and then you can get things started. And sure, mm -hmm. different user, you know, they have a different, uh, again, back a little bit to the voting power, you know, um, different user have a different preferences. For example, when I travel to Tokyo, I find the Japanese user are really into the cleaning part because mm -hmm. like a clean up the neighborhood um, is kind of mingled in the DNA. For example, you cannot find of any kind of uh, um, public bin or trash bin uh, in the street of Tokyo or most of the places in, in Japan because they, they, they have a, a routine like they carry on their garbage and they, mm. they can put it in the right categories, you know, um, for the garbage clear collectors. 
Um, or, uh, you know, right now for, for Korean people, um, that's one thing I just learned from the Korean Blockchain Week. They actually really like the NFBC, like the, mm -hmm. you know, using the book club things because they kind of feel like I don't need to go out to do anything. I'm just at my home and, you know, I listen to my uh, audio book and I can earn rewards. They just love that, right? So, yeah, different places, um, different people, they have a different things. Even though somebody started to complain, it's also the Korean user, they're complaining um, Moksha, um, they, they like coffee. However, mm -hmm. Moksha use the Google Map, right, as, mm -hmm. as a background um, mapping service, which Google Map is not working pretty well in Korea. Mm -hmm. um, they use their own maps. So it kind of giving the challenge to Maksha, like, uh, okay, you might, you might have a, a specific version for Korean users to make sure they can have, you know, more accurate um, coffee shop allocate locations. Um, so that's actually, I would consider as the power of decentralization. So user are able to say something to the builders, to the developers, and mm -hmm. then the user will drive the needs using the needs leverage eventually the delivery of those applications. Mm. You talk about when you talk about this lateral, more lateral structure, it also means that you get direct interaction with your potential user yeah. base using these DAOs, which makes so much sense. So on that mugshot one, I, I don't. Can you explain to me how that actually works? Because what's you know what has coffee drinking got to do with sustainability? What's the X there and what's the earn there? Could you give us like a a work through of how that works? Yeah, well, firstly, from the user journey, it's pretty simple. Um, you mm. take a coffee, and if you choose to use a recycle mug, other than the paper cup or plastic cup, and you take a photo, boom, you get the rewards right away. And also, for sure, they also have a different options. Like if you uh, at a coffee shop, you can choose a different um, option, different button inside of the mug shop uh, to say, oh, I can I can choose like based on my geographical location. And I can choose, oh, I'm in this coffee shop, I'm in this Starbucks, I'm in that Costa, or I'm in that Cafe Nero, whatever. And then I can take a photo about my coffee along with my receipts. You can mm -hmm. get a better allocation um, in terms of the rewards. Or there is another one they call Super Shot campaign, which, you know, in some of the week, um, some of the time, uh, period of time, you can go to a specific uh, coffee brand. For example, you go to ED Coffee, um, mm. and you get even more rewards as um, as like a marketing campaign for the for that coffee shop. Um, so we call it a super shots. So in terms of user journey, it's it's pretty um, easy. And by mm. the way, recently Markshot also adopted the third party social logon. So you can log on with your uh, Apple accounts, or you can log on with your Google accounts. So it kind of opened the door to even non-crypto user. You don't necessarily to own the wallet, but you can use a, a little bit of custodian service and social logon, and you can start to use that right away. Actually, some of my uh, friends and families, they, they are not crypto user, um, but uh, they start to uh, start to use that because of this. My mom actually loved that. You know, my mom is a <laughs> 70 years old Chinese lady, doesn't speak English, but uh, since the last mm -hmm. trip, he visited Milan with me and start to grow a happy like a cappuccino. <laughs> he <laughs> likes to uh, drink cappuccino. So I told her like, okay, use a mark shot and you can earn some rewards. And he really enjoyed that. <laughs> that's that's super exciting. I think, you know, you touched on the, the importance of getting the UX, right? And, and the user journey. Yeah. And I completely agree. We talk about it all the time, but I'm, I'm honestly really enamored by the whole approach that you're taking with these x2o and apps and i the way i see it is very much around micro actions that are being micro incentivized right and i think that's an idea that has been around for a long time but web3 is now really making it mainstream so if you know one example well we've got a couple examples in the uk i'll show we we had the a plastic bag charge introduced you know however long ago 10 15 years or something like that and the the impact of that so you know every time you go in it's only a small change it's like it was five or ten p but i looked up that and it, it's reduced it by something like 7.5 billion plastic bag sales per year right or you know something like 98 percent of the actual total so it's absolutely huge but back in that, those times that was a penalty right it wasn't an incentive and now yeah. we're seeing 
these incentive schemes. And, you know, we've got one coming in Scotland for uh, plastic recycling for bottles where they're giving you back 20 pence on, on what you yeah. paid for for the drink. Right. So these things are now becoming a lot more mainstream. So, yeah, I think I think the future is very bright for those apps. And I, and I hope they uh, I hope they do take off. Just mentioned about the very two, let's say, key points about um, why we wanted to you know, design and build the VBetter DAO as, as the new way to incentivize people to do the right thing. Um, one is, for example, actually many other traditional corporations, they have, we, they call it a campaign. Like, you know, with a certain period of time, they organize a campaign like, okay, don't use the plastic bags or don't use uh, paper cups. And if you use a recycle ones, we want to reward you. Actually, there is a similar campaigns in the in the traditional world, but usually they run it in a period of time. Why? Because try to verify the actions, you know, it's quite difficult. It was difficult. Mm -hmm. um, so they wanted to limit it to only to one location or uh, one period of time and, you know, use the extra force to organize the campaign and try to grow the habit. However, this type of thing, it should be on a daily basis. You shouldn't just do like for this week or for that month. No, you should do it every day, right? It's a huge amount of, let's say, collective and accumulative value um, coming from your daily actions. And the Web3 just make it possible. You know, use the IoT to digitalize your activity and use a smart contract to verify your actions and also a smart contract to guarantee your rewards. And then, boom, it can be done like on a daily basis. It could be uh, reaching outreach to everyone. Not necessarily, oh, you have to be in London, you have to be in Paris, you are able to participate in that type of things. It can be decentralized away. So mm. that's that's um, uh, number one, you know, um, when we think about how to design the Be Better Now. And the other thing is about a penalty. You know, penalty is always showing the negative thing, right? It's like, uh, you know, um, you kind of make the, every user become like a bad boys. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> you know, like, okay, you do bad things, so I want to punish you. It's not really a right, I would say it's not right gamification to grow user that kind of behavior, that kind of habits. And then we all know like a positive education is, mm -hmm. is much more effective, right? So instead of punishing anyone, we say, okay, we incentivize you. Um, to do something positive thing, not only, you know, financially. Financially, is you get a token rewards, but also you get this kind of accomplishments or you are part of the big movement. Um, one uh, functionality I give uh, idea to Mark Shaw, actually, is every time when you finish the drinking or coffee with Mark Shaw, you should see a tree map saying, like, mm -hmm. how much percentage you are saving one tree. Alone mm -hmm. with maybe 10,000 people, 20,000 people, you know, across the whole world. Uh, it, it gives the user accomplishment like, okay, I'm really doing something meaningful and something valuable, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm doing the good things for the whole world, not only just for me or for my, for my family, that kind of thing. So this kind of positive uh, thinking or positive behavior change can really make the user grow that kind of habit. And eventually will drive the de business demands or business leverage to those enterprises. Those enterprises should, you know, start to produce more recycled products or to lower the cost of the recycled products and, you know, able to, you know, make the sustainability implementation more inclusive, not exclusive. Right now, if you think about sustainability, most of the user were like, yeah, it's a good thing, but uh, too expensive. I cannot afford that. Mm -hmm. So we want to really change that kind of thing from a fundamental um, root cause, root point, mm -hmm. that kind of scenario. At first, when you were talking about that mugshot um, feature there, like the idea to show people what their contribution is, the word that comes to mind, they imagine often is gamification. But it seemed more and more the way you were describing it. It's, it's actually deeper than that. And it's more about like, 
combining with community and showing like the overall effect that many people can make. And at the end of the day, we are such tribal community based creatures. So I think we've kind of seen there's been so many failures when it comes to sustainability, because we have these single points of failure at the top 100%. or centralized, you know, governments that are too laggard to actually make the decisions. Yeah. So I think like a big thing that I imagine you're seeing is this network effect, where you get more and more people talking about this, like your, your mom drinking the coffee, and then, then who does she talk to? And like, you kind of get this spiraling effect of yeah. more people. And even just having the conversations a lot to be like, oh, actually, you know, coffee cups are bad for the environment. And most people from an education standpoint, probably don't know that like i didn't know that before this call yeah and well, you go into it actually you know if you see the result it's really really impressive i mean think about like how many paper cups has been used around the world every year mm -hmm. 16 billion paper cups and are coming wow. from uh, 6.5 million trees so that means mm -hmm. if you cut half of consumption of the paper cups used every week and keep doing that every year you are part of the big group of people saving more than three million trees every year. So think about the value of the three million trees, right? And, yeah. and another direction, I, I really glad uh, Alec, you brought this up. Um, another direction is we also wanted to make the building uh, external application so much easy, like very easy. Mm -hmm. I, I give Antonio um, OKR target or goals is within two weeks. It doesn't matter if you are a developer or what kind of a developer, or you, you may not be just a developer. You may just a normal user. If you want to build anything like X to earn, feeding your life, feeding your neighborhood, your people know, to know, um, you know, you can, you should use only less than two weeks. You are able to deliver X to earn applications. And then you can build something in a running like that to serve the people around you, serve the people you know, or territory you are familiar with. Even you could be have multiple different mock shots or multiple different Clinify uh, NFPC. Why not? You know, mm -hmm. it's um, it's the power of decentralization. 